I missed the call over the blare of music in my headphones as I stalked the milk in the freezer section. My mind had been split between trying to stay warm under the artificial cold of the freezer and the song I had blaring through my headphone when I heard it from the ear I'd left free. David and Matthew to the register. I need David and Matthew at the register. My coworker's voice hissed over the ancient PA system that blared through an ear-splitting electronic squeal and a cloud of audio snow. I slid the phone out of my pocket, checking the time. 1.23 a.m. I had four more hours on the shift. The store was usually empty by now. The busiest hours always came hours before or after I was on shift. Having little to no customers during most of my hours there, I occupied my time by stocking the things emptied over the day. Which was why it struck me as odd that I was being called to the register. I could have never imagined what was really waiting for me up there. I doubted there was some overflow of waiting shoppers building up at Chelsea's register, and I told her only minutes prior that I'd be stocking the perishables. Usually if someone needed me this late, they'd just walk over and ask. I considered whether or not to finish the task at hand, unsure of whether or not it was best to leave the milk outside of the freezer for what was an undetermined amount of time when I heard the click of approaching footsteps on the linoleum. Chelsea appeared from down one of the aisles, moving at such a brisk pace I almost immediately knew something was up. I nodded her way, opening my mouth to ask whether whatever she needed at the register could wait until the milk was away. Yet, when I saw the look on her face, the words seemed to get stuck in my throat. She was oddly pale with a look as though she'd just walked in on her own funeral. Eyes wide and watery. And she was shaking like a leaf, as if she'd just seen a ghost. She moved so quickly and, and got so close to me I almost backed into the freezer in surprise when she brought her mouth to my ear and whispered, There's someone at the register. Her voice unsteady and strained with emotion. He... he won't leave, and, and th th there's something very wrong about him. When she pulled away, I could see the gleam of... I don't know... terror, I suppose? In her eyes. That resolve wavering as a look that was a wide-eyed mix of unease and panic passed across her face. My mind spun at the unusual state of her. Chelsea was as cool-headed as they come. Having moved to our small town from New York, Matt and I had always joked that she was built tougher than the rest of us, and whenever there was an unruly customer to deal with, she never failed to handle it. A foreboding chill rippled down my spine. Not from the freezer for once, but, uh, sending a spasm through me as I considered the customer who could bring Chelsea to tears. Is he... Does he have a gun? She shook her head, wiping her eyes and sniffing. N no, no, he, he just he's he's just standing there looking at me and and he won't leave or speak and, and he keeps making this sound. Where's Matt? I asked. Matt was our coworker and the third on the late shift with us. He and Chelsea have been dating for a few months and started working at the Ready Mart as a way to save up for an apartment. He was a funny, cool-headed sort, and perpetually avoided conflict where it came. A perfect yin to her yang. He tended to bounce around the store, like me, doing a bit of whatever needed doing. Though he had a habit for extra long smoke breaks multiple times a shift. He said he was taking trash out back. You were the first person I found. It was at that point that I caught something from the corner of my eye at the far end of the nearest aisle close to the registers. From out of my periphery for a moment, I saw someone was leaning past the shelf in a way that hardly made sense balance-wise, concealing all but their upper half, watching us tactlessly. 
Naturally, my eyes followed, and as I turned my head a bit to peer past Chelsea down the aisle from which she just arrived, I caught a glimpse of what looked to be a man peering behind the farthest shelf. As soon as my eyes turned to meet him, he, he disappeared with an almost cartoonish fervor, ducking out of sight with a jarring quickness. Pins and needles shot along my skin as I stared down the empty hallway. Chelsea followed my gaze, eyes somehow widening further as she spun around to look where I was looking. I felt my heartbeat quicken. Everything about Chelsea's reaction and the odd, though brief, glimpse of the man at the end of the aisle was making me feel, at the very least, we we may be dealing with someone a little off. Still, I saw a little other option than to try and see what he wanted or ask him to leave. As distressed as Chelsea already was, I knew I had to do something to avoid a scene. But I didn't want to guarantee an escalation of things. I started down the aisle, towards the register. <gasps> I heard Chelsea gasp, and almost immediately her hand wrapped around my wrist, drawing me back. Don't- he's- he's not right. Her eyes watered. But she didn't waver, uh, a look of panicked determination emblazoned on her features as she looked into my eyes. If he's being a weirdo, I'll ask him to leave. If he won't, I'll, I'll call the cops, I assured, carefully pulling my arm free. You can stay here or head to the back and get some space if you want. She stared at me for several moments, chewing her lip as she seemed to consider things, before wiping at her eyes with the back of her hand. No, I'll... I'll go with you if, if he gets weird, I'll... I'll call the cops. I grimaced slightly, despite myself. It wasn't that I didn't trust her to do as she said, but I'd never seen her in such a state before and worried what might happen if she continued to be around whoever it was up front. Still, I didn't feel like we had time for an argument and the look in her eye told me it would take one at the very least to dissuade her, so we made our way down the aisle. It's strange. I'd walked that same aisle probably hundreds of times this month, never once feeling anything at all. But watching the palpable increase in Chelsea's tension as we neared the registers made my stomach sink lower with each step. Suddenly, the bright lights and tan floors of the store began to feel like that of a hospital. An anxiety ebbed and surged through me as though we were walking toward the doctor for bad news. As we reached the end of the aisle, I immediately noted the strange sound growing with our approach. It was a persistent clicking, reminiscent at first of the clank of a bicycle's gears when you take your feet off the pedals. Chelsea stopped, terror managing to surpass her defenses as she rose just as we approached the registers. She shook her head vigorously pressing her hands to her ears half-heartedly. The look on my face was likely as quizzical as I felt, and she offered an explanation. I, I'm, uh, I'm staying here. I don't like how he looks at me. I'll, I'll watch from right here. I was unnerved, but felt no need to argue. Her discomfort was obvious. It was unlike her, to say the least. Having worked with Chelsea and her boyfriend Matt over the past few months, I'd come to develop a sort of casual friendship with the two, with them even being the only co-workers I'd actually hung out with outside of work on occasion. In that time, I'd known Chelsea to be the type who reveled in the opportunity to put an out-of-line customer in their place, much to Matthew's constant chagrin. To see her like this was more than a little alarming. The odd click grew louder as I walked out of the aisle. As the line of registers came into view, so did he. In an instant, I was aware of two things. The first was that clicking was coming from him. Almost certainly the sound that Chelsea had spoken of. The second was 
The smell. It was thick and sour. A stench that seemed to permeate the air as I approached, stirring an old memory. I lived down the road from a farm that has a couple of goats notorious for escape. My brothers and I always delight in finding one roaming our property, making a game of chasing it back home. One summer, when I was a kid, our neighbors had told us one of the goats. A three-year-old with a habit for late-night breakouts had been seen in an unusual amount of time. Around the same time, from the woods near our house, we began to smell an overwhelming stench, carried by the breeze that plagued us for a couple of days, and it got so bad we wouldn't even play outside. A horrible smell, like old meat left in the sun. My brother found the animal's carcass not far past the tree line a few days later. Dad suspected a mountain lion had gotten a hold of it. Whatever the case, I never forgot that smell. The reek of decay, for some reason, wafting through our convenience store. The chill I felt as I approached made me certain someone, somewhere, was practically tap dancing over my grave. The man at the register wore a tattered flannel and a pair of dirty jeans that looked to have been worn for months on end without a wash. He stood with his back to me, but I could see that he was swaying, his body rocking from side to side as though he were struggling to maintain his balance. Despite the black hood he wore, I could see that his head was cocked at an odd angle to the right. How you doing, sir? I called using my customer service voice as I crossed the gulf between the register and the aisle. Can I help you? I rounded the opposite end of the nearest shelf, offering cheap Easter-themed candies and keeping a distance between the man and myself as I approached. I felt that day's lunch churn about in my gut, as heavy as the odor of rotten mildew. Damp and overpowering, it began to grow unbearable on approach, its source without question. That sound again. It reminded me vaguely of the strange chittering my cat had made the one time it escaped the house to, to chase a bird. Though his hoodie was up, obscuring his face, I was certain he'd made the sound with his mouth. Though, how? I wasn't so sure. It sent my gut twisting like a mound of worms, somehow even more disturbing up close. As I rounded the register, I got my first view of the man from the front. Jesus fucking Christ! It was a testament to my own self-control that I managed to limit the outburst to just a thought. He looked like walking death. His face was a sort of paper thin and pale I thought was reserved for the dead or the dying. Yet it appeared almost plasticky, shiny and hollow in a way that made my skin crawl. It was mask-like, and, and I couldn't peg why, but it just seemed as though his, his face didn't fit. Something dark and red ran down his mouth and chin, and it didn't take much for me to guess what it was. The ragged condition of his lips telling me he'd chewed them near into oblivion only made those eyes all the more jarring. They were bloodshot. Almost all of the white replaced by a pale red, and his irises were two twin pools of obsidian. 
pouring through my skull with a glassy yet sinister stare. I shuddered out of mutual disquiet and disgust. He glared at me with those scarlet eyes, as though he were trying to peer into my thoughts. For a moment, I found my words escaping me. A strange, primal sort of fear surging through me under that gaze that felt so entirely inhuman. My heart beat with a painful thrum, so loud I could almost hear it, as my throat seemed to go dry, making me stumble over my words. Can I, uh, help you? My words seemed to hang in the air for several long, tense seconds that seemed to grow heavier with each passing moment. Slowly, his head cocked to the side in an almost reptilian gesture. His eyes never once wavered from my own. God, that face. It made me want to scream, or attack him, or or run out of the store and, and never look back. No amount of staring back at him made his horrific visage any more palatable. That sickly pale skin far too unnatural. The sound... The sound was coming from his mouth, yet his lips never once moved until the corners wavered, his smile stretching almost imperceptibly. It sounded like he was making the K sound repeatedly, like a broken record. It wasn't like a stutter, more as if he were trying to figure out how his mouth worked, repeating the sound while staring back at me. The idea that this may be some sort of mental health or drug-related incident was beginning to seem like a sure bet. Sir, I- Can I help you? Cold shiver sent down my spine made my entire body twitch. And as the man finally spoke, I felt dread begin to seep through my consciousness. He... He sounded like me. I've heard impressions before. Hell, I've got a few of my own I'm known to whip out at parties, but... But this... This was not that. He literally spoke my own words back to me. As if it were a recording... Until that moment, I was certain that as odd as things had been, the man before me was just that. For the first time, it began to occur to me that that might not be the case. Can I help you? He repeated it. And again, it was, it was as if I had a delayed echo. Welcome to Ready Mart, he chirped, now in Chelsea's voice. Make him stop! Make him stop! Chelsea screamed from the end where she stood, clamping her hand over her ears, tears running down her face. I couldn't blame her for her reaction. At that moment, I had been struggling to come to grips with what was going on. Some sort of small part of me praying I had fallen asleep on shift again, and this was some horrifically vivid nightmare. The man, thing, whatever it was, smiled at that. The first decipherable gesture he had made since entering. His head snapped around, almost a complete 180. Turning to face Chelsea, though his body never once wavered. Still facing me. His jaw dropped so low. 
and with such suddenness, I, I was sure it must have ripped free from the bone. Stop! Stop looking at me like that! Stop! When he spoke next, a cold splash of realization hit me, and by the look on her face, Chelsea as well. Stop! Leave me the fuck alone! The uncanny recreation of Matthew's voice ended abruptly. Somehow, that seemed worse than if it had continued. The look on Chelsea's face was unlike anything I'd ever seen, outside of a movie. It was a strange blend of life-altering sadness, horror, and unmitigated fury all at once. <laughs> 